So now let's go ahead and let's learn how exactly we could make an API call from our React application. So in order to make an API call from our application, let's first start designing our application. So in our app, the first thing which we need to do is we need to have a search bar here so that we could type in the kind of recipe we are searching for. So if you want to search for pizza, you should be able to go ahead, have a search bar here and you should be able to type in any kind of recipe which you want. So let's first go ahead and create that search component here. So in order to create that search component, I'll go ahead, go inside our application and in the source folder, create a new folder called as components. So components and in there let's create our first component which is the search component so search dot jsx all right so i would say export default function search and let's make this thing return a div and inside this div as we want a search component i just could create an input field here without creating any kind of form so i would say input type is going to be text and now in order to incorporate this search component into our app, I'll go inside the app over here, which is the app component. And I would simply say search, and this will auto import the search component for us from the components folder. All right. So now if I go back to the app here, here we have the search field, uh, wherein I could type in pizza. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's capture the input, which is being entered here. So in order to capture that input, let's actually go ahead and have a state controlled input. So let's say this input which we have here, we want it to be controlled using the state. So what we will do here is that whatever search query which we type in here, let's save that into some state and we will be creating state using the use state hook. So in order to use the use state hook, let's go inside the search component and over here I would say const create a state which is query and along with this we need to have set query which changes the state so this is going to be use state all right and let's say the state is going to be of the type string so now the state is created and now we need to say that the value of this input is going to be this query which we have typed in and we also want to say that all right now query is associated with this but we cannot type in anything here that means we also need to associate an on change method with this one so on change is going to be a callback function which takes the event and then it sets the query value to e dot target dot value meaning it will take any kind of value which is entered here inside this particular input field and it will assign it to that particular query so we have already learned how this works in the previous lectures all right so right now i could type in pizza and the search query would be set to pizza so let's say by default over here, we don't want to keep this search query empty, but instead let's say, even if the user does not type in anything, let's say by default, it says pizza. All right. So if I go back here, now it always says pizza. And if you want to change it, you could simply change that over here. And the reason why we are keeping a default value here is because we'll be making use of this query value in order to make an API call, which looks something like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's learn how to make an API call using our application. So whenever you have to make an API call, you can make use of a JavaScript function, which is called as fetch. So whenever you are writing some JavaScript code in order to make an API call, you could simply use fetch, but in react, you cannot directly go ahead and use fetch. And there are multiple reasons for that. So the first reason is you have to make an API call depending upon if some state in your react application changes. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to make an API call or we want to request the data from an API whenever we type something in over here. So that means only when this input field changes only at that point, we have to, or we want to make an API call. So in order to implement this, we will be making use of a hook in React, which is called as a use effect hook. So we have already learned about the use state hook, which we have used here, but we have never learned in detail, like what exactly hooks are. So let's first try to understand what are hooks in React. Now hooks in React are nothing but they are just regular functions but these functions should only be called from React components. So 
let's take an example of this use state hook. So remember that you always place the use state hook inside a React component and you do not place it outside the component. So that's one rule of hooks which you need to remember that is always place hooks inside a component and never outside a React component. Now just like the use state hook, there are some built-in React hooks like the use effect which we will be learning but along with the built-in hooks you could also create your very own hook as well which we will be learning eventually as we move ahead in this course. Now every hook which you have performs some sort of an action. So for example the job of this use state hook is to create a state and to provide us with a method which allows us to alter that state as well. So that's the job of this use state hook. Now similar to this use effect also has a job to do. Now let's go ahead and let's start learning about the use effect hook. So what exactly is a use effect hook? So the use effect hook is a hook which allows us to sync a component with some external system. So what do we exactly mean by that? So in order to understand this let's take an example. So let's get back to our original app here. So you might have noticed in the demo of the application, whenever we type something in over here, what our application does is that as soon as we type something in here, React application actually makes a request in the backend to the API and the API fetches that data. And as soon as the API fetches this data, our React application ensures that the data over here is updated in real time without us clicking on any kind of button. So this was only possible because we have used the use effect hook and that's because the use effect hook allows us to sync a component which is this component right here with an external system and in this case the external system is nothing but it's some API. So the use effect hook is mostly used in cases whenever we want to make our components sync with some external API so that whenever the component changes the data changes as well. So in this case, what we want to do is whenever we change the name of our application here, we want our React application to communicate with the external system or an API to get the data. And we also want to sync that data with this component as well. That means as soon as this changes, it should fetch the data and it should sync that data with this component. So that's the whole purpose of the use effect hook. And this is why we use the use effect hook to fetch data from the API. So now let's go ahead and let's learn about the use effect hook. So first of all, let's try to understand the syntax of the use effect hook. So in order to use the use effect hook, I'll go back to VS code here and let's say we use that hook up over here. All right. So whenever you have to write the use effect hook, this is what the syntax of use effect looks like. So you have use effect and after this over here, to use state you usually pass in the, the data which you want to initialize the query with but in this case in case of a use effect hook as you can see the use effect hook actually accepts an effect as the first parameter. So this effect is nothing but it's some sort of a callback function. So over here let's create a callback function and let's keep things as simple as possible. So this right here is a callback function. So you define that function here and the next parameter which you pass in to this use effect hook is a dependency list. So a dependency list is nothing but an array. So you have to pass in an array over here as well. So remember that this is the syntax of the use effect hook. So I would say syntax of the use effect hook. All right. So remember that to a use effect hook, you pass in two things. One is the callback function and the next one is the dependency array. Now don't worry if you don't understand what these things actually are. Things will start making more sense as we take more examples. All right. So let's take a working example of this use effect hook and let's try to understand how this works. So here we have this callback function and right now we have not written any kind of code in this callback. So in this callback, let's say I want to define one more function. So I'll define another function like let's say demo. So function demo, this is nothing but it's simply a JavaScript function. And let's say this function logs something into the console. So I would say console dot log and I would say something like demo function executed. All right. So now we have this use effect hook and if I go back here to our app 
if I inspect our app, go to the console, if I hit refresh, as you can see, this function is not executed. And that's because inside this callback function, we have only defined this function, but we have not yet called this function. So this function starts here and this function ends here. That means now I could go ahead and call this function up over here inside the callback. So I could say demo here. And as soon as I do that, if I save this and if I go back here, hit refresh, as you can see, the demo function is now executed. And this happens because whenever you load your application for the very first time, the callback function, which is defined in the use effect hook is going to be executed. And that's the reason why this demo function was executed here. Now it was executed twice because of the react strict mode, but if the strict mode is off, then this will only be executed once. All right. So this was one of the most simplest example of the use effect hook. Now let's say you want to execute this function whenever something in your application changes. So let's say, for example, if I change this to something else in that particular case, I want to execute the use effect hook. So how exactly can I do that? So we all know that this particular input field, which we have here is powered by this query right here. And we want to tell react that, all right, whenever my query changes, I want to execute this use effect hook. So how exactly can I do that? So in order to do that, there's only a simple thing which you need to do. And that simple thing is you just have to pass in that particular state inside this dependency array right here. So right now this dependency array is empty, but look what happens when I pass in the query here. So let me pass in the query here. And as soon as I save this, and if I go back, this will obviously execute for the very first time because whatever code which we have in the callback for use effect that executes when we load our application for the very first time. But along with that, if I change this, as you can see, as I keep on deleting this, the code inside the use effect is executed over here. So if I type in pasta for every keystroke, which I have, it actually executed that particular code inside the use effect. So this is the use of this dependency array, which you have here. So whatever state which you pass in, in this dependency array triggers the function, which is defined inside the use effect. And in this case, we want exactly that. That means whenever we are actually changing the query here, we want to go ahead and make an API call. And that's exactly what is being happening over here as well. All right. So this is how the use effect hook works. Now we will be making use of this use effect hook to make an API call. So let's learn how to make an API call using this use effect in the next lecture. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.